Live from the House of LeMay Makeup and Dressing Room. Here comes Amber. Stop what you're doing. Here comes Amber. She's just doing what she can. Here comes Amber. Cue the spotlight. Here comes Amber with two drinks in her hand. You can't look away Ask her does she do it It's really nothing to it She's got that sound on her game If you have a party Or if you're feeling naughty Call up the house of the maid Here comes your favorite gal Why Angry Gay Grandpa? It's a title that my sons uh, recommended. This is an absolute tragedy that is happening across the country. A lot of LGBTQ youth are uh, feeling so impacted by the wave of anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ rhetoric and legislation that has come out of Washington the last couple of years. 500 uh, legislations last year, almost 500 this year, and it's having an impact. When Lancaster, the story that I've been following, it's not one team, but now we're up to actually, as of today, five uh, young people who have killed themselves over uh, less than an 18 month period. And that's just, that's just unacceptable. Recently, a man entering New York City's subway station at the 28th Street stop threw two cans of flaming fire at a group of people awaiting a train. Thankfully, no one was injured, but I have a few issues here. Most media coverage have been using the word allegedly, no doubt to cover their litigious asses. But was this fire-tossing pitcher allegedly channeling his inner Prometheus? Or perhaps he was hoping for a scout from the Mets was nearby. Either way, the reporting of this alleged event misses the point by, oh, let's say, a train car length. First, were there witnesses? Yes, the people waiting for their train who smartly dodged the tin fireballs. Second, did you witness this via surveillance video? Yes, not allegedly, you saw it. And though videos can be manipulated, absolutely, what you saw is what I saw. How can New York City Transit possibly combat this flaming out of violence short of providing us all with catcher's mitts? Hello there, Amber LeMay here. Where have you been? <laughs> oh, we've got a great show for you tonight. But first, I want you to like, share, subscribe, Thank you very much. And now it's on with the news with Dwayne Scott Cerny. Well, it's been quite a time these past few weeks. Cicadas, eclipses, earthquakes. Let's review. As you know, every 13 years, the cicada unearths itself to mate, which is a hell of a long time to swipe right. Curious how the cicada makes that horribly annoying sound? Well, it turns out that they have an internal organ called a timbal, which has a series of ribs that buckle one after the other as it flexes its muscles, much like that creepy guy at the gym. Uh, now, keep that in mind. The next time you step on one, uh, uh, cicadas, not the gym guy. Now, on average, there's a total eclipse uh, every 12 years. And seemingly every eight years, Trump rises from the grave, giving every educated American a chance to swipe left. Ironic, right? <laughs> Coincidentally, the epicenter of this year's earthquake was Trump's Bedminster Golf Course slash cemetery. So you uh, might want to keep that in mind if you're burying your ex-wife beside a Diet Coke machine that steals your change, because it may result in earthquakes and slower Bible sales. Next up, the UK's John uh, Fred Tennyson Wood is officially the world's oldest man at 111, as his predecessor, Juan Vincent Perez, unexpectedly passed at 114. Unexpectedly, uh, Tennyson Wood was born the same year as the Titanic sinking, which he had nothing to do with. He claims the secret to his longevity is luck, eating fish and chips, and burying his late wife on his local golf course where, coincidentally, he shot 111. Hey. In tech news, 
a Silicon Valley self-driving car hit a robotic dog. Judge Marilyn Meow of People's Court will hear the case before 12 cats and an alternate jury pool of Roombas. The self-driving car claims it was an AI issue, meaning it didn't see a robotic dog because of its blurry eye. The dog claims it was tending to its robotic balls. The old innocent on liquor defense never works. And finally, New Jersey Shore had some 3,700 volunteers picking up over 175,000 pieces of trash from the, from the Jersey Shore. Uh, sadly, not the cast. Uh, whoopee cushions, denture cream, uh, voodoo dolls, all these things were found, which sounds like Snooky is still looking for love. I know. And that's the news in my briefs. Thank you, Dwayne. Hey, Russell, come on in. Amber, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine. Good to see you on a Sunday night. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we never do this on a Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. All right. So, Russell, I know we've got some new people watching tonight. What's the best place to watch the show? Well, the best place to watch the show is always on YouTube. And that's because on YouTube, you can see Amber in full HD <laughs> And we have a great chat room there that's full of all your friends and, and us. And you can talk to us, tell us what you think about the show, and talk to your friends. And it's just a wonderful place to be. So we recommend going there. And then I want to remind people that if you go to the Amber Live interviews, which are available as podcasts, you can listen to the interviews when you drive to work at any time. So there's lots of places and lots of amber out there. So get out there and find her. Yes, that's for sure. And Russell, you have something else to say? I always have something else to say, and that's we need your help, people. Uh, we need some new bustiers. Uh, season five got off to a great start, but we need to add to that list. Use that Venmo at RJD Pro to become a bustier. Send us a donation and then use that uh, your credit card if you don't want to use Venmo at amberlive.tv and just look for the support button, the donate to Amber Live button. And the Boostiers are the people that help us pay all the bills that we have to keep this going. So please and thank you to all of our Boostiers. We really do appreciate the help that you've given us. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right, Russell, what's on tonight's show? Tonight's show is full of great stuff, but the main guest tonight is Robert Anthony Jones, who is an old friend of Rocco's from way back. Who knew? Who knew Rocco knew anyone and even had people that liked him? And um, we'll admit it. <laughs> and we'll admit it, yes. Uh, but uh, Raj, as he likes to be called, is on the show tonight, and he is a working actor out there doing shows all over the country, but also he's worked on Broadway and on touring Broadway shows. He spent, between the two, he spent about three years doing Broadway work. Uh, and then right now he uh, was just wrapping up being in one of your favorite shows that you'll get a chance to talk with him about tonight. That's right, The Prom, The Prom. Yes. All right. So on with the show. Yes. From Uncle Fester in the Adams Family, to Barry in the Prop, to Zaza in La Cajo Fall, to Bialystok in the Producers, to Amos in Chicago, to Mr. Applegate in Damn Yankees, to Edna Turnblatt in Hairspray, Robert Anthony Jones is having a theatrical career that is envious to all character actors and performers, me included. Let's take a look at his work. I am what I am. I am my own Creation. So, come take a look. Give me the look. Or the ovation. It's my world that I want to have a little pride in. My world, and it's not a place I have to hide in. Life's not worth a damn till you can say, Hey, world, I am what I am. 
I dreamed last night I got on the boat to heaven And by some chance I had brought my dice along And there I stood And I hollered someone faint me But the passengers they knew right from wrong For the people of said sit down But I see your true colors shining through. I see your true colors, and that's why I love you. So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors. True colors are beautiful like a red. Is, I am happy to be standing here doing what is meaningful to me, talking on behalf of the Universal Dog Hall, not barking up a stranger's tree. Hey, Tracy, hey, baby, look at me. I'm the cutest chicky that you ever did see. Hey, Tracy, hey, baby, look at us. Where is there a team that's happened? Fabulous! So I go, go, go on the path now. Say hello to the red coming around. Ah, ah, yes, I know that the world's been in class now. Tell Ola Bridget to step aside. <laughs> I'm green. I'm green with envy. Robert Anthony Jones, come on in. Hello. Oh, hello there, Raj. What? Oh, my gosh. I don't know where to start, but I want to know where you started. Tell me about where you grew up and when did you know that you were, were either a performer or that you wanted to be a performer? Well, I grew up on Long Island, um, Long Island, New York, and I knew I wanted to be a performer a little later in life, um, I wanted to be a teacher. I always wanted to, that was my first love. And then my sister was auditioning for Oliver in the high school show. And she, and, um, she was a senior and I was in sixth grade. And she said, wouldn't it be fun if you came in and auditioned for this and we could do my last year together? And I did. And then um, I got called back for Oliver. And then I got the understudy for Oliver. And uh, I tell this story all the time. Our producer, one of the producers of in, in the, at the school said to my mother, and they called me Bobby back then. They're like, you know, Bobby was great, but he was just um, too healthy looking to play Oliver. I was like, nope, no one asked. No, no one asked. We were all fine with what we got. <laughs> so where did you go from uh, being uh, Oliver's understudy? <laughs> So then, you know, I did I did uh, the high school shows and then I started like going into community theater and then I got um, my theater degree at Hofstra University, also on Long Island. And um, and then I went from there and just started working professionally um, uh, at, at, like all over the country. And then I oh, 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 tell me how you go from graduating from college to going into professional uh, being a professional actor. I, you know, I, I, I kind of lucked out. Um, I just started auditioning right after I got out of high school and I got, um, I think I got a summer, I think one of my first jobs was a summer stock job in um, 
in Indiana, I think, called the New Harmony Theater. I'm not sure if it's still there. And then I got a tour right after that, going to schools, um, doing a Midsummer Night's Dream. And so, and then I just kept working from there and auditioning. I just had, I also had a very supportive family. So that was super helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. when, when did you know, okay, this is no longer a lark, you know, it's no longer just summer gigs that I'm going to make this a profession. Well, I think, I think it was when I was in high school and my voice changed and I was a singer. Like I always sang and bring him home, which was on that video. I, I first, my, my, one of my voice teachers gave it to me when I was about 15 or 16. And she said, sing this, I think this, and in that, that's when I started to kind of get noticed in town and and in and at my school and I, I I said I think I think I might be able to do this but what's terrible is I had and have it's better now but I have terrible anxiety so it's almost like kind of torturous that to go into something where it's literally so anxiety anxiety inducing but it just was the only thing that I was driven with. All right, let's talk about some of your what what is your all time favorite role that you performed? I know that's well, tough. There's several for different reasons, I'm sure. Right. A Zaza in Lacage is oh. is probably one of my favorites because it's just it's so complex and it's funny and the book is in is so it's really nice when you go into a show and all you have to do is say the words. The book speaks for itself, so you just have to go out there and say what's written. Um, so that that's definitely in my top top Tell three. Me, where where did you do that, and for how long? Uh, that was at Virginia Musical Theater um, in Virginia Beach, and that was only for we rehearsed for two and a half weeks, and we did it for a weekend. Oh, it's nuts! And I I said I could do this one forever. Yeah. Um, and I also, I loved, I just played Miss Trunchbull last year in Matilda. Uh, so that was super fun. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that that's a, a different character. Yes. Well, and also no one ever hires me to be mean. So that was, I, I like really relished in that. So that, that was super fun. And I actually love Barry in the prom. Yeah, we'll, I, I, we'll talk about Barry uh, later on because I, yeah. I have special affinity for that as well. How about Hairspray? I mean, my gosh, playing a role like that, Edna? Oh, I forgot about Hairspray. Yeah, pretty. Uh, to be honest, anything in drag, there's something I'm. I, I, if I knew how to do makeup and costuming better, I would consider doing drag because I feel so comfortable and so at home. I've. The, the and and when I did Edna and Zaza and I I loved doing hairspray and I I played Wilbur as well I've done Wilbur and hairspray and I've done Edna but and I love them both but mm -hmm. I love Edna more because it, there's so much there's so much to the character and another great character role you did was nicely nicely Johnson in Guys and Dolls which is one of my favorite musicals um, tell me about that. Well, I did it. That was my high school. That was my high school show, uh, my my senior year. And then, then the clip that was just on there. There's a professional theater, the Argyle Theater. That um, do you know Evan Pappas? He's um he's fr he's dead like my favorite year. He I grew up listening to him oh. on recordings. He's the artistic director of this theater, and he directed the show. And that was their opening show. And I came back into Long Island to working as a professional doing Guys and Dolls there as Nicely Nicely. So that was kind of a full circle moment. Mm -hmm. um, Fester and Adam's family. I mean, yes. they just go on and on. Yeah, no, I've, I've been able to place, and I've created some roles too. Like I've created some roles off Broadway. I did um, Benicula and Char that uh, based on the book, James Howe's book and uh, that he wrote with his wife and Charles Bush wrote it. Our good friend Charles Bush. Yeah. So I worked with Charles in Benicula and I created that role. And I created, um, I did The Prince and the Pauper, which was at the, I think it's defunct now, but it's the Lambs Theater on like 44th off Broadway um, between 6th and 7th. And uh, I created those roles as well.
Now, we, we did some investigating, and we found out that you performed in a production of Godspell with the one and only Rocco Zamboni. <laughs> you got to talk about that. Well, we, we were, it was me and my friend Justine, and I think, and we just kind of, they needed two people for a weekend. And we went, I forget. Did Zamboni, did he play Jesus or was he Jesus? Oh, I hope not. I know. <laughs> That's your Lord and Savior? <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, we went in and we we had a ball on stage. I don't really think the audience was laughing, but we sure were. And then um, we all got um, hotel rooms and we would uh, we stayed in the hotel for the weekend. I think they even like put us up and it was just like this like, really janky motel on the highway on Long Island, but we had a ball. <laughs> okay, Raj, we're, when we come back, we're going to talk about what you're doing currently and what you have coming up in the future. We'll be back right with more information from Raj. Thank you. I really am envious of Raj. Wow, what a career. Russell, come on in. Oh, my goodness. Everybody should be envious of Raj. He is so talented and doing so well. And, of course, you know, we're envious, but we're we're happy for him because oh, what course, a what a great career! <laughs> of course, all right, Russell. We've got more interviews with Raj, and then what else? Well, uh, we had a little trip. I had a little trip. You kind of stayed home this weekend, but <laughs> I went up to Vermont and I saw Amber and Lucy Bell and the whole uh, cousin Crystal, everybody up there, because I went up to see the solar eclipse. And uh, Amber, what do you think of the experience? You know, I I was thinking, oh God, it's just a a thing. You know, it's nature doing its thing. But I, it was totally awe inspiring. Just beautiful. It really was, and uh, that's a picture that a friend of ours' sister sent. Uh, I think she was in Ohio at the time, or somewhere out there, uh, of the eclipse. And that moment, which lasts like two, three minutes, uh, was just stunning and i i you know i had seen an eclipse as a kid and i thought it was a totality but it's been a long time i forget um but you know you don't you think yeah it'll be a thing you know it'll be fun it'll but man we just our jaws were on the floor and we were just staring at the sky and you can see here uh <laughs> before the totality just how uh the vermont gang was entranced by the whole thing <laughs> What a crew. What a crew. What All a right. crew indeed. So, uh, and then I do want to remind people uh, that you can help us out again by going to the store and we have a ton of great products there, all kinds of fun things. We've got Amber, we've got Rocco, we've got Rusty, uh, we've got the Vintage Confidential Collection and they're all available at amberlive.tv. You can get that great hoodie uh, you can get it on T-shirts. Uh, we got tons of products, so go check out the store. And then we get back to part two of our interview. Let's go. I'm oddly excited. Perhaps that's because, although it shouldn't matter, it. Somehow does. It's strange, but I feel like I'm in a time machine. Cause guess what? It's like I'm suddenly 17. So look on my limbo on board the dumb. After 29 years, I am finally going to prom. Oh, oh. Still it's fine, and though it's been years, I've called my mom, and tell her the moment's overdue, all of my waiting is over too, and if you're not happy, I'm over you, this memory, this memory, give me more, Barry's coming too. All right, we're back with Robert Anthony Jones, who 
that's if you don't know, that's the performance of Barry from The Prom, who where you're currently doing that, correct? Yes, I'm doing that currently at the Short North Stage in Columbus, Ohio. Beautiful theater, uh, great place to work, very hip. <laughs> <laughs> now, is is it a touring company? Uh, no, this one's a regional. It's a, one of the, the, I think there are two equity theaters in Columbus, and this is one of them. All right. H had you performed Barry before? No, this is my first time. Oh, well, it's going to be a notch. You're going to be called to do that many, many times. I'm what, already do Oh, sorry. <laughs> what what drew you to that, that role? Well, the first thing that drew me to the role is I saw it on Broadway and I was like, oh, I could do this. I could play this role. This is this is a good role for me. Um, but then when I started doing it, I, I, I didn't know that it was going to be as um, cathartic as it is. It's it's it runs the gamut. And he he has this entire journey that he that he discovers through this girl at the school you know it's 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 just a beautifully i just feel like it's a beautifully written show about acceptance and tolerance and love you know uh, some of our audience might know that i performed barry in november as bob and uh, for lyric theater and i agree with you it, it's just a cathartic show that i said oh this is fun and then as you get into it and what it means and what it would have meant to me as a high school kid, I go, wow, it, it, it just, the, the piece is so powerful. The music is so great. And it, it's really a beautiful show. And I mean, uh, when I was a kid, there wasn't really anything like this. I mean, you had um, Harvey Firestein, thank God, you know, but like, and you had Lacage, but it was not, you know, n now it's tackling more issues like, gay rights and trans and, and all that stuff. So I would have loved to have had something like this when I was a kid. All right. So you're doing that. How long is the run there? Um, we closed this weekend. Oh, oh well, yeah. enjoy every minute of it. I what's will. Next, what's next for you, Raj? I go back to the city and I immediately start rehearsing for a show um, at an off-Broadway house. Um, it's a... It's a revival of Lucky Stiff. Um, they, um, Aaron's and Flaherty wrote it. You know, like they wrote um, "Once on the Island" and "Ragtime," and oh. so uh, it's it's. Um, I play Doctor Vinny, and um, it's just it's kind of like Weekend at Bernie's, but <laughs> a musical. Um, super cute, super funny, and they do it. They do these. They do these kind of like revisals for this company, J Two Spotlight, I believe it's called, and. Um, we do. We perform in in um, in an off Broadway house in the city, so that'll be fun. And I also, in tandem with that, I'm doing another show that they're trying to um, uh, get to a movie Broadway soundtrack. Like that's like there, and it's about um, it's called Gaslight Cafe, and it's about all the um, like Bob Dylan. All the people from the from that time period, the the um, I always call it Peter Paul and Mary. I always I always call it Mary Kate and Ashley, like all. <laughs> but um, <laughs> and I play um, excuse me, I play Wavy Gravy, um, who was like a big activist at the time, and he became a clown. So I'm kind of like the MC for that. And we're doing we're doing um, we're performing two nights at the Cutting Room, which is very exciting in New what? York City. What roles are out there that you haven't done yet, but you would love to do that someday you'd, you'd jump at the chance? I have, you know, I'd love to play, I'd love to play Man in Chair from Drowsy Chaperone. Oh. And there was another one the other day that I was like, oh, I want to play that. And I can't, I can't remember which one that is, but I am going back to where I, I um, worked at the Forestburg Playhouse um, in Forestburg, New York last year doing Matilda and Adam's Family. And I'm going back to do um, Barry and the Prom there this summer. Oh, my goodness. Well, Raj, congratulations on a wonderful career. And I know Thanks. it's just going to go skyrocket from here. So thank, thank you. you so we much. didn't even talk about my Broadway career. Oh, okay. Well, start, tell me about it. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I did Finding Neverland on Broadway for about a year and a half. And then um, right after that, I went and I did uh, Phantom of the Opera on the road for about a year and a half, which was, was a great three years. Let's, go, let's put it that way.
Now, who was in Never- Neverland with you? Uh, Matt Morrison, um, oh. Kelsey Grammer. Oh, that's okay, yeah. Um, we had a week with Sandy Duncan. She was in it, too. Um, crazy. It's great. <laughs> a, week, a week with Sandy Duncan. <laughs> that, that it's the title of my autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, oh. so it's been a, it's been a ride. Oh, I just well, always like to get the Broadway in there. Oh, you have to. You have to be, you know, know. be your own PR person. That's what That's I That's right. That's right. right. Well, thank you, Raj. Break a leg tonight there in Columbus, Ohio, and tell thank them you. That I said hi. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Raj. And now, Rocco Zamboni. Well, you remember that total eclipse of the sun about a week ago? Hey, it's me, Rocco. I'm here in uh, somewhere in Vermont, way up north in the snow and everything. I'm going to check out that eclipse thing. I don't know what they're talking about, because if you notice, that sun is pretty bright right now. I think it's all a hoax. It's all BS. We'll see. Stay tuned. There it is, looking all bright and shiny and stuff. I don't know why you can't look at it. It's beautiful. What is it, Medusa? Stupid. So I was busy staring at the sun when all of a sudden this happened. Somebody turn out the lights. Look at that. All right, you can see it glowing because the camera sucks. But that is a total eclipse of the sun right now. Total. All right? Let me tell you, I'm a little freaked out right now. It's scary. Not that scary, but come on. What happened to the sun? Anyway, I hope you survive. I hope I survive even more. Hey, somebody's turning on the lights. Look at this. And maybe it doesn't look weird to you, but it is weird, all right? Take my word for it. It's freaking weird. How many aliens just took over people's bodies is what I want to know. Rocco, you were in Vermont for the eclipse and you didn't come see me? Uh, I bet you Boog and Shug would. How about it, guys? The local community theater is auditioning for Hamlet. I think I'll try out. You want to play a baby pig? Shakespeare's Hamlet. Oh. What are you doing? I'm trying to roll my 